guys what's up so this is the part 1.6 in environment and ecology section uh, this is a very very high yield series again i am telling you 20% of your paper of next year as well as 10% of your questions will be coming in mains also and 2014 and this is prelims 2015 so please make sure that you watch these videos and do spread the word around that i am making them this is by me dr ovan seni and this is the youtube channel and academy so this is the facebook page where you should be going for these awesome videos facebook.com slash roman saini dot official i hope you are having an awesome time let's make it more awesome by watching these videos and have fun studies should never be boring studies are not boring studies are interesting see i'm smiling here because i'm studying and making it steady so if you have still any doubt you can ask me on the page you can comment whenever you want on the comment section below i do make sure please make sure that i remember these comments i write them down and all the videos i make are in accordance with these comments so energy flow here the sun is the only source of energy for all the ecosystems on earth please make sure you know this exceptions are there it's a very very deep sea there are hydrothermal ecosystem why because uh, the heat which is releasing uh, can also act as a source for the chemiotrophs plus sulfur compounds Uh, bacteria can also act on sulfur compounds and produce energy. Example, chemiotrophs like archaea bacteria, etc. Uh, but they are very, very negligible portion. Don't worry about them. They are capable of creating organic matter from some sulfur-based compounds plus heat from the springs, etc. Now, since the sun is the only source of the energy, incident solar radiation. Let's assume if it is hundred, so fifty percent only is photosynthetically active radiation. that is only 50% of sunlight can be captured in the form of radiation it is 400 to 700 nanometer this is wavelength you must be knowing by now it is also the visible spectrum so if you write v i b g y o r so violet is having 400 nanometer of wavelength and red is having 700 nanometer of wavelength this is the most energetic part this is the least energetic part and also this is the maximum frequency this has the minimum frequency so energy increases frequency increases and wavelength decreases so this is the relationship you must be knowing out of the total photosynthetically active radiation only 2 to 10% is actually fixed into organic matter and then the unidirectional flow of energy occurs from sun to autotrophs to heterotrophs so assuming uh, 1 million of total uh, sunlight is coming in let's assume joules so only 50% is photosynthetically active that is 5.5 million out of which 2% that is 1 lakh will be fixed by autotrophs that is t1 then out of 1 lakh 10% rule of energy says it goes to 10000 that is t2 then it goes to 1000 is that understood here it is 10000 please make sure that you remember these things then it is 1000 and then it is 100 and finally it is 10 only if you are not paying attention please wake up again i'll uh, the law of thermodynamics are obviously obeyed in this energy flow everyone knows it law of thermodynamics are obeyed everywhere so energy here also can never be created nor destroyed it is only transformed and let's assume the 1 million joules are coming from sun so only 10000 are fixed by plants so where did rest 9 lakh 90000 joules go they are dissipated in temp uh, temperature losses that is heat plus respiratory losses of plants entropy law says that if any system is left to itself it goes to anarchy or it increases entropy or it increases instability so you have to constantly supply active energy to prevent that loss of energy then rule of 10% it's also called as 10% law of lindman so energy is reduced by 10% during flow to every higher trophic level it's not tropic it is trophic please make sure you remember these little, little things trophos means uh, nutrition so i can quote three uh, have you heard of troposphere so till then the life exist above that very negligible life exists so nutrition similarly have you heard of word eutrophication eutrophication also means trophos that is enrichment of lakes and other water bodies 
so because of this law the number of trophic levels are usually restricted to four or five only right from sunlight being trapped by autotrophs into organic material and further transfer of energy to higher trophic levels on an average 10 percent of energy is transferred that is 2 to 20 percent and while rest 90 percent is lost in respiratory and other losses so the number of trophic levels increase in a food chain most of the energy is lost that is why there are only four to five uh, if there are more than the energy loss will be huge hence this is one of the argument which is given in favor of adopting vegetarian food habits so if you become vegetarian so you are a t2 that means that energy loss are decreasing this uh, this will less energy will be lost so again the last time i'm telling you please remember this uh, 1 million is from sun out of this 5 lakh is par out of this 1% uh, 2% is fixed so 10000 is at t1 then 1000 is at t2 then 100 is at t3 then 10 is at t4 then only one at t5 so if 1 million energy started so only one reached t5 so that is why we should be occupying t2 or t3 only heterotrophs anyone who is not autotrophs is heterotroph who are dependent on autotrophs for their food directly or indirectly it includes both herbivores that is cow rabbit goat etc and carnivores like dogs and lions and uh, etc these are the organisms which are unable to fix sunlight directly and hence are dependent on plants directly or indirectly for their energy requirements please make sure directly or indirectly heterotrophs also include the topmost predators like human beings the herbivores are the animals which feed on primary producers that is also called as first trophic level they are also called as plants they are also called as autotrophs and they are also called as now herbivores are called as secondary producers the primary producers are plants and they are now producing organic matter by eating plants so they are called as secondary producers and they are occupying the second trophic level they are also called as primary consumers obviously includes many insects mammals like rats etc and terrestrial ecosystems also like cows and goats and buffaloes and whatnot and mollusks in aquatic ecosystem then we have carnivores so these are the animals that eat other animals which in turn eat the plants or their produce and they are also called as secondary consumers or tertiary producers primary producers are plants secondary producers are herbivores this is t3 so they are carnivores there are certain omnivores that usually occupy the topmost that is t4 example man they occupy many trophic levels we can be at t2 we can be at t3 we can be at t4 depending upon who we are eating we eat both plants and animals and whatnot so what are the special points of biotic factor biotic factor are nothing but autotrophs heterotrophs so they are showing nutrient mobilization obviously yes then we have whale in form of filter feeder what is does is water comes uh, it uh, filters out the zooplankton so it uh, and, uh, and phytoplankton so it becomes a secondary consumer primary consumer are zoo, uh, zooplankton whale becomes secondary consumer vulture is not occupying these uh, traditionally the levels it feeds on dead body so it is a scavenger and so also help in decomposition insectivorous plants they are extremely important they are producing so they are primary producers they have double role they are producers as well as they are consumers why they are consumers because they let's assume uh, t1 is that the plant obviously they are there then t2 is insect then they are also t3 these insectivorous plants occupy t3 because they eat these plants then man and peacock are omnivorous so they occupy multiple trophic levels already told you if you are eating milk or curd then you are the secondary consumers because you are feeding on animals indirectly then we have introduced the concept of food chain in this video food web i'll be dealing in the later videos so the green plant in the ecosystem they are also called as producers in a terrestrial ecosystem they include vascular plants in aquatic ecosystem they include phytoplanktons and algae this is the starting point of food chain anywhere in this world except for detritus food chain which will be dealing later so a food chain is a linear please remember this word linear sequence of links in a food web so it goes through various trophic means nutrition levels starting from autotrophs i have already told what are autotrophs at first trophic level going to herbivores carnivores and it ends with the decomposers however death of any organism mark the starting of detritus food chain or food web 
सो इन नेचर फूड चेन डू नॉट एग्जिस्ट प्लीज मेक श्योर यू नो दिस देर इज नो फूड चेन इन नेचर वी हैव डन इट टू सिंप्लीफाई इट ओनली फूड वेब एग्जिस्ट इन नेचर सो अ लीनियर पार्ट सीक्वेंस ऑफ अ फूड वेब इज कॉल्ड एज फूड चेन सो देर आर वेरियस टाइप ऑफ फूड चेन एनर्जी इज ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम वन ट्रॉफिक लेवल टू अनदर फोर ट्रॉफिक लेवल्स आर यूजली देयर इट कैन बी टू ऑल्सो इट कैन बी इन वेरी वेरी एक्सट्रीम सिचुएशन एट ऑल्सो सो द फर्स्ट ट्रॉफिक लेवल इज टी वन दे आर प्रोड्यूसर्स एग्जाम्पल फाइटो प्लैंगटॉन ग्रास ट्रीज एक्सेप्ट्रा टी टू इंक्लूड्स प्राइमरी कंज्यूमर्स लाइक जू प्लैंगटॉन्स रेबिट्स एक्सेप्ट्रा टी थ्री इंक्लूड्स सेकेंडरी कंज्यूमर्स लाइक बर्ड्स फिशेज एक्सेप्ट्रा एंड फाइनली टी फोर इज देयर टॉप कंज्यूमर्स इंक्लूड्स मैन लॉयन एक्सेप्ट्रा so this is a called as ecological pyramid it depicts various things so these are the soils or decomposers this is the t1 where the primary producers are there this is t2 this is t3 and this is t4 so make sure you go through this we have already talked about it in detail then types of food chain uh, what are the types of food chain first is the grazing food chain or the predatory food chain whatever you want to call it it is dominant in aquatic ecosystem please make sure doesn't mean it is not found in terrestrial ecosystem but it is dominant in aquatic ecosystem it starts with phyto goes to zoo then small fish then large fish t1 t2 t3 t4 prior producer primary consumer secondary consumer and top consumer similarly we have grass rabbit fox and lion that is t1 t2 t3 t4 in terrestrial ecosystem moving forward we have parasitic food chain Uh, the pyramid of number is inverted this is a very very important point i'll be dealing with it in later so the tree is there t1 then birds t2 and we have parasites which are on t3 very very simple kind of food chain then we have detritus food chain also called as saprophytic food chain also called as osmotrophic food chain so it begins with dead organic matter it can start in any food chain as soon as the animal dies it the detritus food chain begins it is made up of decomposers like bacteria and fungi which releases enzymes on the dead remains and they decompose they are also called as saprophytes because sapros means to decompose or also called as osmotrophs because they absorb their nutrition osmotically after digesting the food outside their body so fungi they release enzymes they convert complex let's say carbohydrates into simple carbohydrates and then they absorb osmotically the decomposers not only plays an important role in food chain they also play an important role in mineral cycle that is called as bio geo chemical cycle then we have they are extremely dominant in terrestrial ecosystem in this energy flow is very 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 slow but the magnitude is great because the death is so huge so assume there are dead mangroves which are eaten by bacteria and fungi which are further eaten by insects which are eaten by small fishes which are eaten by birds birds eaten by snake snake by peacock peacock by tiger usually this is the maximum which you can achieve at t8 level beyond this energy uh, laws do not allow it to go so guys i hope you are liking these videos if you want me to if you want me to make more videos like high yield series or any other series whatsoever if you want me to start a new series or restart an existing one if yes is the answer uh, hit the like button below on the youtube video and you can comment on the post on my fb page uh, this is the fb page that is facebook.com/romanseni.official you can also tweet to me at my twitter handle at @romanseni this is a youtube channel and academy click here to subscribe i hope your studies are going awesomely awesome just like you guys are awesome so thank you for watching the video have an awesome day